Hi everybody. Today we're going to be starting Objective 10.1b. <coughs> we're going to be performing compositions with trig inverse expressions. Uh, if the dogs bark or if you hear my chicken squawking, just keep listening. Okay? We'll get a giggle out of it. Uh, to, uh, our objective today is to simplify expressions involving compositions with trigonometric inverses. For example, sine, cosine inverse of one half or sine, sine inverse of three-fifths plus cosine inverse of twelve-thirteenths. So let's get started by reviewing what we learned last week about the inverse functions. So where are those inverse trig functions defined? So I'm going to go ahead and go to uh, Desmos, pull up Desmos. We're going to look at pictures of these just to remind ourselves all right, so I'll turn on this first one here. Here's our sine inverse of x. Let's go ahead and go into our settings, and let's put our x-axis from negative 3 to 3, and we'll just go to step of 0.5, and then we'll go on our x, our y-axis. Let's go from negative pi to pi and step that at pi over 2 so that we can see what's happening. Make sure you're in radiance. <laughs> <coughs> so here we have our sine inverse of x, and you can see the domain left to right, excuse me, is negative 1 to 1, and our range is from negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. So we'll fill that in. We have a domain of negative 1 to 1, and a range of negative pi over 2 to pi over 2. Okay, we'll switch back to Desmos and we'll look at the cosine inverse. Turn that one off, turn that one on. And there you can see the range, or the domain, negative one to one, and the range is from zero to pi. So domain negative one to one, range zero to pi. Okay, and then <coughs> we'll turn that one off. Let's look at, excuse me, tangent inverse of x. Let me zoom out a little bit so we can see what's happening there. Okay, so you can see an asymptote here, or maybe you can see the asymptotes here between neg on the range, negative pi over 2 to pi over 2, and it looks like as I zoom out that the tangent function is unrestricted on the domain. So we'll go ahead and go here to our domain is unrestricted. Here my chickens. They're squawking. And uh, we're approaching negative pi over 2 and approaching pi over 2 on our tangent. Okay, so we'll go back into Desmos now. And let's look at our sine, our cosecant inverse. Here I have it typed in as sine inverse of 1 over x. So you can see here when we look at this that there's an asymptote at um, y equals 0. And then you can see that the range... So we're going from negative, let's talk about domain, negative infinity to, let's see, negative 1, union 1 to infinity, and then you see an asymptote there at uh, y equals 0, so negative infinity, <coughs> I'm sorry, range negative pi over 2 to 0, and 0 to pi over 2. So cosecant inverse negative infinity to negative 1, domain 1 to infinity, and then we have, <coughs> excuse me, negative pi over 2 to 0 approaching, and then 0 to pi over 2. Now we'll go look at secant inverse real quick. So we're doing cosine inverse of 1 over x to get our secant inverse and take a look at that. And there you can see you've got an asymptote on your y-axis there, y equals pi over 2 and your domain negative infinity to negative 1, union 1 to infinity. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> my goodness, my allergies are bad today. Okay, so we got a range of 0 to pi over 2, and then pi over 2 to pi. All right, so negative infinity to negative 1, 1 to infinity on the domain, and then 0 to pi over 2, open, pi over 2, to pi, and then close. Last one here is cotangent, so we're typing in tangent inverse of 1 over x. 
So let's go and look at that last one. We'll turn that one on. There we have it. So you can see there's an asymptote horizontal asymptote there at y equals zero. And you can see the range, negative pi over two to pi. And it looks like we have a, um, a no, uh, no domain restrictions there. So our domain, negative infinity to infinity, and our range was zero to pi. Okay, so now let's organize that if we were on the unit circle for our range here. So for our sine function, here's a quadrant one, sine inverse is definitely in that quadrant, our cosine inverse, our tangent, inverse or cosecant inverse or secant inverse and our cotangent inverse <clears throat> they're all in our range between um one and zero and pi over two for sure pi zero to pi over two is in every single range and then let's see let's take a look at our sine function it's from negative pi over two to pi over two. So here's a negative pi over two. So we know that our sine function, our sine inverse is defined in quadrant four. Let's look at our cosine. We have zero to pi, zero to pi. So cosine inverse also exists over here in quadrant two. All right, then we'll look at tangent. Tangent is between negative pi over two and pi over two. And so tangent inverse also is defined in quadrant four. Cosecant inverse is from negative pi over two to zero. So that would be here, cosecant inverse, and zero to pi over two, which we already have. Our secant inverse is from zero to pi over two and pi over two to pi. So our secant inverse is in quadrant two. And then our cotangent is between zero and pi, so cotangent is also in quadrant two. <clears throat> now remember, every value is positive in quadrant one. Cosine, secant, and cotangent are all negative in quadrant two. And sine, tangent, and cosecant are all negative in quadrant four. Notice none of the inverse function, trig functions, are, are defined in quadrant three. You should really d memorize this information here. Okay, so here we go. Um, we are going to work on some composition of trig functions and their inverses. So here we have some shortcuts. I would consider these shortcuts. Now, you don't really have to memorize them because you could always just do the work to prove them. But let's take a look at them anyway. It says sine of sine inverse of x equals x for all x in the domain of sine inverse x. So let's just make sure that these are, you understand that these are true statements, but only that they're contingent um, upon the given restrictions. So you have to check for the domain of the sine inverse, which would be between negative one and one. Okay, so you, they only work and they're only shortcuts if the x that you're given in each statement is in the domain of that inverse function. Okay, so be really careful. So you're going to check the restrictions before applying the um, shortcut. All right, and here are the other two. You got cosine of cosine inverse of x equals x for all x in the domain of cosine inverse which is also negative one to one. And then tangent, tangent inverse of x equals x for all the x in the domain of tangent inverse of negative one. And what's nice about the tangent inverse is that um, tangent, tangent inverse of x equals x all of the time because there aren't any restrictions for the domain of your tangent inverse. All right, so let's take a look at these two problems here. Example three says simplify each of the following. <clears throat> so here we have cosine of cosine inverse of three halves. Or I'm sorry, that says the square root of three over two. So the first thing I'm going to do is see if I can apply my shortcut up here 
that says the cosine cosine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2 equals the square root of 3 over 2. So we're going to check for the cosine, the domain of the cosine inverse, which is from negative 1 to 1. And so I want to know, is this value in that domain? Well, remember that the square root of 3 over 2 is equal to about 0.866, and that is definitely in our domain. And so we could say, we could apply our shortcut and say that the cosine, cosine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2 equals 3 over 2. Now, let's just say that we wanted to show our work and understand what was happening here. So let's say, all right, I'm going to go to cosine uh, inverse, which is uh, defined in quadrant 1 and 2, and positive um, in quadrant one. So here at pi over six, cosine uh, is value is the square root of three over two. It doesn't matter what our y value is. And so we could just sit here and go, okay. So let me grab my orange pen here. I'm gonna do a substitution here of this value. So we have the cosine of, let's see, the square root, it's cosine inverse of the square root of 3 over 2 is pi over 6. Okay, so that is my substitution or the angle for which cosine inverse is the square root of 3 over 2. And then I can go, which is pi over 6, and then I can go, well, okay, so the cosine of pi over 6 is the square root, mm, wrong color, square root of 3 over 2. And so you can see that that is true. And so the shortcut applies in that situation. Let's try example B. So here we have a sine, sine inverse of 1.8. So if we want to apply the shortcut, we have to say uh, sine inverse is, um, <coughs> is defined in the domain negative 1 to 1. But 1.8 is not in the domain. Therefore, we were going to say um, a sign of something that does not exist. And so this does not exist. It just does not exist.